Greetings. I've mentioned a few times on this channel how any non-trivial 3n plus 1 loop would have to have at least 10 million members, but we've never gone into why that is. So let's see. If there's a loop of length k equals 13 with x equals 8 up moves, then by moving these 8 pieces around we can create all kinds of operation sequences. And for each sequence, if we stick m in here, we'll get something out here. And if we solve for m equals f of m, then we'll have a loop. The number m returns back to m after 13 steps. So this computer tells you how to solve for m. You multiply all these increasing powers of 2 with all these decreasing powers of 3, and you sum up all those products. We call that beta. Then divide beta by 2 to the 13th minus 3 to the 8th, or 1361, and that's m. In this case, m equals 9,721 over 1361, which is not an integer. Now, if we keep moving these pieces around, can we find an integer loop? Well, m would have to be huge. If m small, say under a billion billion, then we know about that loop already because we know all the small numbers go to one, but we can try. So how many operation sequences do we need to try for k equals 13, x equals eight? It's kind of 13 choose 8, because you choose 8 locations for these 8 pieces. Let's say we push all these pieces to the right one space. Well, that's a different operation sequence, but it's actually the same loop. We just rotated the operations, and now m is just a different member of that same loop. So the number of distinct loops is actually equal to the number of distinct necklaces that you can make with eight yellow beads and five blue beads. Let's say you're a jeweler and I'll pay you $100 for every distinct necklace you make for me with eight yellow beads and five blue beads. I'll give you $100 for this one and another 100 for this one, but not for this one because it's the same necklace as that one. Now, in this case, there are 99 distinct necklaces, so you can make $9,900. Here's the general formula for k and x. I know, right? Okay, so we need to check 99 operation sequences here, looking for the one with the biggest m. And maybe we'll find one where m is bigger than a billion billion. Well, to get the biggest m, let's push all the pieces to the right. That way we activate all these giant powers of 2. But if we rotate the operations, it's actually the same loop with the smallest m. This is the circuit loop with all up moves preceding all down moves. Uh, we can call it the low loop. Well, this is getting to be a pain to check all these. And if we imagine if we had k equals 50 or k equals 1,000, it's too much to check. What if we could go directly to the most promising loop, the loop with the largest members? Let's call it the high loop. Then we test the high loop, and if it has any member under a billion billion, it's not an integer loop, and neither is any other loop of this length. Well, this operation sequence has a huge beta value, but it's the same loop as the one with the tiny beta value, the low loop. So to make the high loop, we're just gonna spread the e pieces evenly across the board, like this. Now you can see each piece straddles two positions, and so we're going to slot it into the one on the left. That's it. So this snags us a bunch of high powers of two uh, to get a good beta, and no amount of rotation is going to reduce that beta. And in case you're wondering, in this case, m works out to be 10.655. So the high loop isn't an integer loop. But the much better thing is we don't have to check all the other 98 loops because we know they all have some member less than 10.655 because they're not the high loop. And if you've got a member less than 11, you're not an integer loop. Heck, if you've got a member less than a billion billion, you're not an integer loop. Anyway, for any k, we can now quickly determine whether there's even a possibility of an integer loop. And for k equals 13, obviously forget it. So for k equals 100, if we check it, forget it also. So how big does k have to be before there's a possibility of an integer loop of length k? Could it be 10 million? Okay, we'll find out in the next episode. See you then.